shall we pray? Our Father, we thank you so much for your love and care towards us. Lord, I pray that as we continue, continue with us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. We are still on almost a Christian. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Acts, almost a Christian, part two. Almost a Christian, part two. Acts chapter 26. From verse 26. Acts 26. From verse 26, the Bible says, For the king knoweth of these things, before whom also I speak freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that ye hear me this day we are both almost and all together such as I am except these bonds. Praise the Lord. We got started yesterday by discovering that almost a Christian is no Christian at all. As they could say, nearly does not kill a bird. Almost a Christian, 99.9 .9 does not make one Christian. Well, my wife read, she said, he said, God's standard Standard sure. God's word, standard sure, has this seal on it that whosoever, man or woman, boy or girl, general overseer or church member, that name it the name of the Lord, should do what? Depart from iniquity. He can't condescend. He can't go higher. The standard is kept. And so we find out that almost a Christian will not qualify anyone for heaven unless you are a Christian indeed. And yesterday we started by looking at who is almost a Christian. And we said it is the person that loves the things of God but still tells lies when situation demands it. He loves the things of God, can go any extent in serving the Lord. But when there is opportunity to tell a lie, we just do that with joy as if nothing has happened. That is almost a Christian. Two, we discover that it's a person whose service unto the Lord has some question mark. If almost a Christian is a person who service unto the Lord has some question mark. Three, who is almost a Christian is a born again according to him but drinks alcohol once in a year is almost a Christian. He's not altogether a Christian. He drinks at will Sometimes, number four, it is such a person who professes to be a Christian, pays his tithes regularly, goes out for evangelism, but plays with sin. But plays with sin. 
that is almost a Christian. And as uh, the teaching is going on, I would want believers and non-believers, any part of the globe where you are watching or joining us in this meeting, uh, examine your life. Examine your life. And I want the media to get us a song ready. Search me, O Lord. I know my thoughts today. Keep it ready until I call on it. So with number five, we discover he said, it is a person with charisma who can do anything for God, but has no character. A person with charisma, he can run around for the Lord. He can move around, even kill himself for the service of the Lord, but has no character. Number six, who is almost a Christian, is a person who can speak in tongues but cannot respect her husband, or as a man that beats up his wife. That's almost a Christian. Then the question is, who is a Christian? We started with that yesterday. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verse 26, Acts, chapter 11, verse 26, Verse 26 said, And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. In Acts chapter 26, verse 28. Acts 26, verse 28. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. First Peter chapter 4, verse 16. First Peter chapter 4, verse 16 says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So we discover that the followers of Jesus were first called Christians in Antioch, meaning little Christ. These are little Christ. These are the people that their lives resemble that of Christ. These are the people that their secret dealings resemble that of Christ. Little Christ. But in our days, it's no longer, um, it's now fashionable to answer the name Christian. It wasn't given to them to praise them. It was uh, something, it was a, a derogatory name to despise them, ridicule them, bring them to naught. But in our days, is now a fashionable name. Everybody identifies with the name. But the actual question is, who? Is a Christian. And yesterday we started, he said, is someone who is saved. A Christian is someone that is saved. Someone whose life had been touched by the Lord. In Acts chapter 11, from verse 19, Acts of the Apostles, Chapter 11, from verse 19, the Bible says, Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none 
but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, speak unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and the great number did what? Believed. A great number of the people that had the message about the saving power of Jesus Christ believed. And their believing made them to turn their back against sin and turn their face toward God. Look at it, he said, verse 22, sorry, 21. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and the great number believed and turned unto the Lord. A great number of them that believed said bye-bye to their old lifestyle and focused unto the Lord. Said they separated themselves from their sin partners, from their drinking and the nightclubs, from their occult and the kingdoms of darkness, and now focused on the Lord. In other words, these ones had been saved from what? From sin. These ones have been salvaged, delivered from sin. Let me tell you, brethren, if you talk about deliverance and the message on repentance is not there, that deliverance is rubbish. The first problem of man that attracted other problems to man is sin. At the time of creation, man was created perfectly in the image of God. It was when man sinned, when this same old devil we are fighting came and deceived man, man accepted his offer and then God Man fell from grace to grass. It was the thing that gave the devil upper hand to afflict man, to torment man. So you can't talk about deliverance from water spirit without talking about deliverance from sin. No sin, no water spirit. No iniquity, no water spirit. If man maintained his status quo, that God created him in the image of purity and righteousness, there is no way. Jesus Christ was talking, he said, the God of this world comes. He has nothing in me. The Bible called him accuser of brethren. He is there to find fault where you went wrong and to report you to God. So and so is not qualified to answer a child of God. So and so is not a Christian. And so what are we saying? Those that believed, they believed they were saved and they turned unto God. In the book of Acts, Acts chapter 18, chapter 19, verse 18 and 19. Acts, chapter 19, verse 18 and 19. And many that believed, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Praise the Lord. 
Now, from the passage we read, we're trying to find out who is a Christian. A Christian is someone who has believed. A Christian in the Lord. A Christian is someone who is saved. A Christian is someone who had been detached from sin and its pleasures and now focus onto the Lord. And that's somebody who has believed. In Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, I read from verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words, did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were what? Baptized. And the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. These 3,000 souls, we are out of the multitude of the people that had Peter preached. Now, out of the thousands of the crowd that had Peter preached, 3,000 out of them believed that Jesus Christ is the Savior. That Jesus Christ can cleanse one's sin. Iniquity of one who believed in Christ can be remitted, erased, wiped away. So out of the thousands, it was these 3,000 that believed. When they believed, as a sign that there is something that has taken place in their spirit man, they submitted themselves to water baptism. The Bible said, He that believeth shall be baptized. And he that does not believe shall not. And so, what happened? After they had believed, they were separated. The Bible said, And they were added unto the church. And then, they no longer visit the drinking joints. They no longer visit their former boyfriends or girlfriends. They are now, they continued, look at verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Look up now. Now they have believed these 3,000 out of multitude now said bye-bye to what they used to do before and now followed the Lord and followed the teachings of the apostles. They were no longer of the other side. They are now in God's side. That these are Christians. They believed. And when we read in Acts of the Apostles, those of them who believed a sign that they have believed is this. The occult men among them brought out their occultic books. They brought them together. They told the brethren, it's their testimony. Brethren, praise the Lord. Before now, we have been into occultism. People look at us as those who were okay. These are the books we were using to telepathize to astral project, to invoke, to commune with spirits. They brought them before the people and everybody said, and they said, what do you want us to do? Today we have denounced those powers. Today we have rejected our loyalty to those powers. We have now believed in the Lord. Please, apostles, destroy them. And costly books. They spent their money to subscribe those journals. 
It could be you are hearing me from your room or you are watching or in any of the districts and you've been spending your money subscribing some of the Western uh, cult journals and you'll be reading them so as to acquire the so-called power or to develop your will power so to speak but and let me tell you dearly beloved there is no road there it could be you have graduated i had a roommate in the university i think uh, okay not in the university it was in the uh, um, college of health so the individual he came back he said brother water I, I'm, I'm now I'm now graduating. I can perform some magics. I can perform. I said, look at you. Thank God you called it magics. <laughs> Thank God you called it magic. I can, I can perform some magic and uh, do some things. Satan. Satan you want to devote your life unto. You will cry a bitter cry. Dearly beloved, it could be you are one of them. You are one of the philosophers who twist God's world, who feel that what is it, what is the Baptist man talking about? Dearly beloved, life without Christ is full of crises. The Bible says, What shall it profit a man after gaining the whole things in this world? You are delivered from the powers tormenting you, and you are set free from all the forces, and yet. Without Christ, you end up in hellfire. So those of them that believed gathered their books and destroyed them. And they became free. So who is a Christian? A Christian is someone who walks in faith. Someone who walks in faith. That's a Christian. In Acts 11, chapter 11, verse 24. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verse a 24 verse 24 the bible says verse 24 it says for he was a good man and full of the holy ghost and of what faith and much people was added unto the lord so faith a christian is someone who has faith in god what is faith that I believe that God is. And I believe that what his word says, that's what he's going to do. And I trust in him. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible for you to please him. For whosoever that will come to him must believe that he is. And he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, who is a Christian? Is someone that has works in faith, not inside. Someone that works in faith. He said, Pastor Walter, what are you talking about? You don't know the extent of the havoc I've caused to humanity. You don't know the number of people I've killed. Are you trying to tell me that if I believe in Jesus, he can forgive me? If I believe, what is faith? Believe, that's it. If I believe in Jesus just like that and I confess my sins, it will be over. Exactly. Uh, Pastor Water, I'm still having some problems. You may not know the extent I've gone in the world. The blood of the Lamb is so powerful to cleanse, to purge, and to make you whole. So you need to believe that is able to save you. Who is a Christian? Is someone who helps to teach others how to live a Christ-like life. Second Timothy chapter two, verse two. Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy two, verse two. The Bible says, "And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same." Commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Uh, who is a Christian? Is someone who has believed in the Lord and is able to teach others, to show others the way 
that he or she got saved. That's a Christian. In Acts chapter 11, from verse 25 to 26. Acts 11. Acts 11, verse 25 to 26. The Bible says, Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus, for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and did what? And taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. They were there teaching. Who is a Christian? Is he that has believed and what he believed, he's teaching it to others, he's sharing it with others, and getting them saved. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, Matthew 28, 19 to 20, the Bible says, 19 to 20, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Who is a Christian? Is someone who has believed and who had received the commission at the time he believed to share his faith with those who have not believed. You know, in John chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says, as many as do what? To them gave he what? To become what? The sons of God, even to them that believe in his name. Now, you have believed in the Lord. At the time you believed in the Lord, you received the power to make others believe in the Lord as well. You say you are now a Christian, but you keep your mouth shut. You don't tell someone about Jesus. I doubt if you are a Christian. Christians testify their faith. Christians share their faith with their friends. Christians share their testimonies. Oh, dearly beloved, I was so, so, and so. But the Lord saved me. And the Lord made me what I am. And other, you will be prompted to let someone hear about the saving grace of Christ in your life. That's a Christian. You can't tell me you are a Christian from month to month. You can't tell somebody about Jesus. You can't tell year to year. You can't say so, so, and so is my convert. So, so and so is somebody I brought to Christ. All that believed became vanguard for Christ. All that believed in the Lord became crusaders for Jesus. All that believed in Christ became talking drums for Jesus. Anywhere they went, they are talking about Jesus. They're talking about what the Lord did for them. And they are sharing their experience. Brother, have you believed? Sister, have you believed? In the office, does your boss know you as a Christian? I remembered one of the days while a civil servant. We came to our office. So we were doing industrial attachment. Our boss was just there. It's an awkward man. So we knew it's an awkward man. And two of us, we started preaching to him. We have done our homework before confronting an awkward man. So he was sitting with two chairs who were here. So while we were preaching to him about Jesus, he left us there physically, entered into the spirit world. He said, gentlemen, stop. I see, I don't, I have forgotten the name he used. Two men, as I would want to move forward, 
and they are pushing me backward. We knew he was referring to us. And we told him, sir, which we said, play, play, we were really serious. My brother and I would not say, no way. We are, we are sitting before you, you are going nowhere. You must hear us. Oh, this is about a boss. But we play, play, we will laugh over it, but we know we are using, talking to him, pinning down those power. Let me tell you, brothers, there is no road there. Tell your neighbor, there is no road in occultism. There is no road. There is, look, who, who is behind occultism? It's Satan. Does Satan have anything good for mankind? Not at all. He will give you power to excel. He will give you power, make you popular, give you money. Anywhere you go, people will be giving you red carpet. He has prepared hellfire. That's why you will end. So if you're one of them, using his power to glory and people are bowing before you, you will become firewood that will increase the fire in the lake that burn it with fire and brimstone. And that's why you should throw away those books. Denounce all those things. Whatever be the thing, you know, the burning of this, invoking this, invoking all. There is no road. Jesus Christ is the Savior. Jesus Christ is the way to life. Jesus Christ. Oh, my dear, I'm telling you, it's good, it's good to believe in Christ. And the youths that are there, and my prayer for you all is, at your youthful age, may you embrace the truth. What is the truth? Jesus Christ. Once you stand on the sure foundation, that is Christ, as you go higher in life, maintain your standard. Whosoever that does not feel you, because you are this, you are that, let your faith be known. Who is a Christian? Is someone who is not ashamed of Bible. In the University of Ife, our head of department, Professor, I will mention his name. And this prof, if he is coming to lecture, he is having his lecture notes. The next thing is his charm. It's like this microphone. That's the size. It's like, and in the, it's a wood. And this has a lot of nails. This, uh, what is it? The pin, office pin. If you just round and round and all over, you'll be seeing the, the metal surrounding. As he drops his lecture notes, he'll drop his charm. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And anywhere he's going, that his charm must go with him. He's not hiding it. It's not any other thing. He's proud that this is the thing that protects him. It's unfortunate. Those who say they believe, they don't go to office with Bible. Those who say they are Christians, they are ashamed of this book. Some lecturers, some doctors who are here, they are ashamed of this book. But this man, professor, could carry his otromopo with his lecture notes. Because at that time, a lot of lecturers were dying on Ife Ibado Road. They were keep dying like anything. So they were looking for where to anchor themselves. It's unfortunate. The man anchored his life on a wood. <laughs> he anchored his life on something that was created. Dearly beloved, if you will anchor your life in Christ, it will be eternally secured. The wind will blow, it will stand. Whatsoever will happen, Apostle Paul said, sudden death is sudden glory. I would have loved to leave you and join him yonder. But seeing you here, oh well, that's okay. Dearly beloved, who is a Christian? A Christian is somebody who knows where he's going. Heaven is real. Brother, tell your neighbor, heaven is real. Let me tell you, 
There is nothing we can say. Nothing under this sun you can compare with heaven. Heaven is the ultimate. In anything you do here on earth and you miss heaven, you will cry a bitter cry. And tonight, I don't know whether you are almost a Christian or you are altogether a Christian. You can take a decision to be a Christian indeed. And the grace of God will do wonders in your life. Rise up on your feet and let us go to the Lord in prayer. Rise up on your feet. It is time to pray. It's time to pray. Almost a Christian is no Christian at all. You want to be a genuine Christian. Can you raise up your hand? You want the Lord to give you the original. And you are tired of this one? Can I see your hand up anywhere you are? You are saying, Lord Jesus, I want the genuine experience. Can you come forward? God bless you. Take your Bible, come forward. I'm going to pray with you. Just come, come up, come up. Come forward, come forward. Come forward. God bless you. Come forward. You are telling the Lord, I want to be a genuine Christian. I want to be a genuine Christian. I want my sins to be forgiven. I want the Lord to change my life. I want to be a brand new child of the living God. Anywhere you are, you are still in the crowd. This is opportunity the Lord is giving. In all this uh, states, in the districts, do you want to be a genuine, sincere Christian? The Lord is here to do it. And those of you who are here, I want you to close your eyes and begin to pray. Tell the Lord, oh God, I am sorry. I want to be. I've made up my mind to let go. Sing. Bye-bye. From today, Lord Jesus, save my soul. And brethren, I want us to lift them before the Lord. Let's tell the Lord, oh God, save them. Oh Lord, do a new thing in their lives. Oh God, do a new thing in their lives. Lord, do a new thing in their lives. That from this day forward, let everything that has to do with old lifestyle be gone. Make them yours indeed. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to pray after me, those of you here and those of you there. My God, my Father, I sincerely repent of my sins. Lord, forgive me. Change me. Transform me. Make me your own child. That from today, I will live for you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. I'm praying for you. Heavenly Father, I lift them before you. Lord, I'm asking that the precious blood of the Lamb that washes whiter than snow Wash them thoroughly clean. Within and without. Cancel their names in the book of death. Write their names in the book of life. Give them the assurance of this miracle taking place even now. Thank you Abba Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please, can you just come over here? Somebody will have to hear me. Are you very sure you have an uncle? Be 
very sure Be very sure Your anchor holds And griefs are solely drawn Amen Search me, O oh Lord We are going to sing this song together And I want you As we are singing, we are praying as you allow the spirit of God to search you you will not go home with any stain of sin you will leave this room pure as purer than gold in the name of Jesus search me O Lord and know my heart today try me oh savior know my thoughts I pray Da 
thou wilt supply a need for blessings now, O Lord, I humbly believe. I want you to close your eyes and tell the Lord that He search me. If there be anything that will make me to miss heaven, Lord, destroy it in my life. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My sister, open your mouth and pray. If there be anything that will make me to miss heaven, Lord, crush it in my life. Crush it in my life. Tell the Lord to destroy it in your life. Lord, any iniquity, whatsoever be, no matter how tiny it is in my life, Lord, purge me, that it purify me. Oh, Lord, sanctify me. I will not miss heaven. Lord, 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 I will not miss heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Any seed of iniquity marine kingdom had planted in my life be rooted out by fire. Any desire after the things God hates marine spirit are planted in my life be rooted out. Be rooted out. Open your mouth and begin to pray. My sister, pray. Heavenly Father, we are standing by the authority in that name. That is above every other name. Whatsoever be the seed, water spirit has planted the seed of his sin, the seed of iniquity, the desire after the things God hates. Oh God, by your power, let it be destroyed. Let it be destroyed. Let it be rooted out. Lord, we command the powers from the water ruling the church of jesus christ all over the world be destroyed the activities of the marine kingdom the activities of worldliness be shattered be destroyed be uprooted be uprooted in the name of jesus in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray my lord my father sanctify me purify me keep me holy till i see you in glory open your mouth and pray lord i am asking for the sanctification and the purification of the church keep us pure and holy till we see you in glory hmm. In Jesus' name we pray. Make me holy, Lord. Make me holy, Lord. Make me holy, Lord. Just as you are, make me holy, make me holy, Lord, make me holy, Lord, make me holy, Lord. Just 
asking that the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, the purging and the cleansing power of the blood of the Lamb, descend now, sanctify us, purify us, purge us of any iniquity. Lord, anything you hate, no matter how tiny it is in our lives, root them out. Amen. Keep us pure. Keep us praying. Keep us evangelizing. Keep us ready for rapture. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. And let the church say, Shall we pray? Father, I pray that the spirit of the living God we take this passage of the scripture we're about reading and enabling to really get things done tonight, we receive in Jesus' name. I just want to consider briefly altar versus altar. Altar versus altar <laughs> you can sit down you had the sister that said a prophetess a prophet came to their house and told in the big yard it was she that was singled out and she was not even there when the prophet came and say that somebody summoned her and paid 70,000 to the altar somewhere. And now she, whosoever that knows her, should tell her she should bring 15,000 naira so that I will now use it and pray and destroy the altar over there. Brother, <laughs> it's not by money. And fear gripped her, I told her, sister, relax. Don't panic. Just, it's a word of prayer I'm going to release tonight. Any altar where you have been summoned, without your knowledge, something will happen this night. I say, this night, this night, you will hear the story tomorrow. I told you I will not preach in Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 20. Let, let me just number Numbers chapter 22. I read from verse from verse 21. And Balaam rose up in the morning and started with his ass and went. Okay. Okay, verse 21. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his ass and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger was kindled against him. Tonight, those who have taken your name to somewhere, they are on the journey to the altar or to the evil forest. God's anger will kindle against them. I say, God's anger we kindle against them. And then he says something. Let me just get there from verse 35. And the angel of the Lord said unto Balaam, go with, them, with the men. Then chapter 23 direct. And Balaam said unto Balak, build me here seven altars and prepare me here seven oxen and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered an, on every altar a bullock and a ram. And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy bond offering, and I will go. Peradventure, the Lord will come to meet me, and whatsoever he showeth me, I will tell thee. Verse, 20, uh, verse 4 And God met Balaam, and he said unto him, 
I've prepared seven altars and I've offered upon every altar a bullock and a ram. And the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return unto Balak, and thus thou shalt speak. And he returned unto him, and lo, he stood by his burnt sacrifice. And he and all the princes of Moab, and he took up his parable and said, Balak the king of Moab had brought me from Aram out of the mountains of the east, saying, Come, curse me, Jacob, and come, defy Israel. How shall I curse whom God had not cursed? Or how shall I defy whom the Lord had not defied? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. Lo, the people shall dwell alone, and shall not be reckoned among the nations. Now stop there. Close your Bible. Stand up. I'll just tell you some things. What actually caused the trouble? Israel, they were on the journey to the promised land. As they were passing through the territory of the Moabites, the king of Moab saw their number, saw the fleets of cattle, the fleets of sheep, the fleets of goats, un number, in fact, uncountable. Fear gripped him. Dearly beloved, the enemy after your life is not an enemy because you did evil to them. They became your enemy because of the progress you are making. They became your enemies because of your decision to stand as a man, as a woman. Others may go to bow and beg before they could eat. You say, no, I have two hands. I have two legs. I will struggle on myself. That is the crime you committed. Or it could be your children are going to school and coming back. Or you are, in fact, you are healthy. That's all. Say, so the way we are looking at this woman, I will travel for them. Those who traveled for you will not come back. Those who came back already and they are waxing, you will go for their funeral. Now listen to this. Listen to this, dearly beloved. God is faithful. It was God that arrested that boy. It was God. The boy had collected the materials so as to become big guy and be driving latest car. You know that is the reigning thing. And that is it. Enjoyment without labor. That's the latest. Yahoo, Yahoo. But he entered into a wrong hand. From tonight, those of you that their names are already, their pictures are already in the shrine, God will fight for you. Now, listen to this. He prepared the altar. And try to curse. The thing is, just open your mouth. Say something. Anywhere they are, it will scatter them. God said, if you try that, I will kill you. He now took him to the mountain of Pisgah. Say, can you see? It could be. You didn't see them very well. Look at them now. Look at their thousands. Look at their number. There are those who are not after their own business. It is after your business. They are just monitoring watching see you change shoe you have offended them you change cloth you are now oppressor you are laying foundation to build your house which means it is only your house that will stand in this village and that's why they are saying you must go down it's a lie <laughs> altar versus altar and listen to this tomorrow when you are coming, be prepared. Whatsoever they have summoned you, the altars they have taken you to, tonight, this altar, we face that altar. And anyone that is powerful, we win the battle. My God, my Father, 
Arise and fight for me. Arise and fight for me. Open your mouth and begin to call upon God. My God, arise and fight for me. Lord, arise and fight for me. My sister, open your mouth and pray. Brother, pray. Any altar where they have taken your name to. Any altar, shrine where they have summoned you to. Lord, arise and fight for me. My God, arise and fight for me. Lord, arise and fight for me. God, arise and fight for me. God, arise and fight for me. My sister, open your mouth and pray. Brother, open your mouth and pray. God, arise and fight for me. Altars where they have taken my name to. Altars where they have taken my underwear to. Altars where they have taken my picture to. Lord, arise and fight. Lord, arise and fight. Lord, arise and fight. Arise and fight. In Jesus' name we pray. Anything representing me in any altar, in any shrine, all over the world. Holy Ghost, fire! Release fire, release fire. Sister, release fire. Whatever that is representing you, representing your children, representing your marriage, representing everywhere, fire! The fire of the Almighty descend. Altars and shrines and kingdoms representing anything that is there representing this church disaster calamity horror fire consume them 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 In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. My God, my Father. I call upon your name. Answer me by fire. Any altar. Any shrine. Any prayer house. Any candle. Or incense. Burning. Against my life. Be wasted, be wasted, be wasted, be wasted, be wasted. Any incantation going on against my life, backfire, 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 backfire. Brother, backfire, destroy. The power of the Almighty begin to move right away. Altars and thrones and covens and kingdoms. We are my name have been taken to disaster. La ba ya kandaraba. Yere makoso. The power of the Almighty begin to destroy. Altars crumble. Kingdom collapse. Shatter. Amen. Oh Lord God, tonight it is altar versus altar. It is altar versus altar. Oh Lord God, let your power 
move from this altar locate the altar where my name had been taken to locate the altar where my children's name had been taken to locate the altar where my business name had been taken to and begin to destroy 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 my brother pray sister pray my brother pray altar versus altar altar versus altar the mighty jehovah the owner of the whole universe oh god move this night let there be destruction inside the water the sacrifices that have been made inside the water destruction and calamity destruction and calamity begin to destroy begin to scatter altars and coffee kingdoms crumble the power of the lord overrule destroy them destroy them scatter them and burn them turn them to dust and ashes let your name be exalted the power of the almighty take over Amen. Amen. Now sit down. I'm coming back to pray. I will give our offering now. This night will be the night Israel will get ready to leave Egypt. <laughs> Brother, don't leave this room until you've had the last amen from me. Am I talking to somebody? This night, I mean this night. You will hear the story by tomorrow morning. My sister who gave testimony that the wicked stepmother, two of them bet. This one gave the other one six months. The other one gave the other one three months. I will bury you. It's not empty boasting. And the woman was out. That was why she suffered what she suffered a few weeks ago. So sister, for, I want to remind you, they are moving here and there to make sure that what she said will come to pass. She wants you down. But tonight, you will hold on to God. Jehovah, the man of war. He will move in the battle for you. And it will not just be all that are connected towards the death of your sister or your sister-in-law all of them will be confessing in the village the church is like you don't believe what I'm saying God will put them in the tightest corner they will be confessing and they will use their mouth and tell the whole world under duress in your case I will not talk offering time Praise the Lord. Shall we stand? Shall we stand? Stand on your feet with your offerings. Make sure you are giving something that will motivate God. That will push God this night to destroy those altars where they have taken your name. Your name or the names of the members of your family. Lift your offerings up. Come in the hands of God. Thank God. Thank you for making you to be alive while today 
as you're lifting your offerings up, say God thank you for making you to be alive and to be in the in our midst when this thing will happen. Say God thank you as you're lifting your offerings up. In Jesus' name, we pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you, we glorify your holy name for making us to be alive the day it will happen. Altars will fight in altars. Father, we say may your name and know be exalted in the name of Jesus. Our hands are lifted up with our offerings to say thank you in advance. Oh God, I'm praying and asking that you receive from the hands of your sons and daughters anywhere they are this hour and go before all of us into the battle in the name of Jesus. I cover the offerings with the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for your new advance. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Be seated. Eluna la megidonye sino gara dirani nam. Elu megidea, ala megide. Eluna la megidonye sino gara dirani nam. Elu megidea, ala megide. Eluna la megidonye sino gara dirani. Don't know the meaning of the song. The song is saying that let the heaven stand against and touch them. Let the earth judge against those who say that it can never be well with us. Hallelujah. So when you are singing, know what you are singing. I say, To say this tomorrow, two things will be going on. One is wealth recovery, two is altar versus altar. I'm telling you in advance, go tonight where they have summoned you. You don't do summons without a token. Is it? I don't know about your tradition. In my tradition, whosoever you summon, you are going to pay something. Either goods or money. Or you went to a paramount ruler's house. You summon so so and so over there. You either go with wine or you go with a pan wine. So, so, and so, did, did this. I would want you. That is for settlement. But for altar, altar is not settlement. Altar is vengeance. Altar is vengeance. So, I don't know. My duty is to pray. 
But it is God who knows. Tomorrow, this night, if something is telling you, it's like they have taken your name somewhere. Or you've been in a dream and you see such. Tomorrow, when you are coming, prepare something with which they summoned you to the altar. This is a, a woman met a man of God. And they told man of God, my mate or my enemy took my name to shrine with one goat and some tubers of yam over there. Man of God, please pray. Man of God said no. Go and buy the same thing. Take it to the altar of God. Let the two altars fight. Man of God left, went on his way. He had summoned them over there. And he, she had summoned this one. Let the two altars fight. So if you, it's not for everybody. You have that feeling, you have that dream or something has been telling you your name is somewhere or something that belongs to you is somewhere or they took your name somewhere. I don't know. If you will have that feeling or someone told you your name has been taken to somewhere, can I see your hand? It's not for everybody. But for those who have that feeling, as tonight prepare something with which you are, while we are going in for recovery, two things I will do tomorrow. One is recovery of wealth. Wealth recovery from the marine world. All your wealth stolen, kept there. You, you don't like it, I will force you to like wealth. You know, some people, they say, oh, wealth will make me a sinner. I don't need wealth. The Bible says, blessed are poor in cash, for they shall, no, it's poor in spirit, not poor in money. Wealth will pursue you. Yeah. I say, wealth will pursue you. Yeah. Well, you don't like it, you've entered. The power of God that did what we saw last night is going to trouble the marine world. That thing your grandmother sold out in ignorance, in exchange. Tomorrow, we are looking for where they are. Even this night, trouble is in the marine world. The one your grandfather traded with without his knowledge. We don't need wealth. Just give us children. They got children. Wealth vanished away. What will those children feed on? You will have children. You will have wealth. You believe that? Can I hear your amen? So I'm going to pray right now. But tomorrow, when you are coming, two things get prepared. You have a, a movie, a leading. We are altar versus altar. After this meeting, brother, after this meeting, it's not, my mouth shut up. Close your eyes, let's pray. Mighty Jehovah, I am lifting your children tonight. Those who were not aware that their names have been taken to somewhere, open their eyes of understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I am asking this night, all those altars, all those shrines, all those kingdoms, where their names have been taken to, I release fire. Lord, I am asking this night, the evil forests, let the fire of the Almighty consume them. The thing that is representing them there. It could be their goods. They never trickishly bought. And they took it there. Since that time, customers ran away. Since that time, the business started going down. 
that did this night dispatch your angels to move from altar to altar, shrine to shrine, river to river, stream to stream, occultic kingdom to occultic kingdom. We are the nailed your children. We are the nailed your star. We are the nailed your progress. Let your power destroy everything in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I am asking at this moment all the powers from the pit of hell that vowed that your children will not amount to anything in life. To those they turn their lives upside down, I return their lives back to original. <laughs> to those they block their way, I open their ways in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever they programmed into their physical bodies, tormenting them, afflicting their health from their hair to the sole of their feet, I gather them, I root them out of their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, this night, move on behalf of somebody, fight on behalf of somebody. Lord, more importantly, marine kingdom, that the, all the sacrifices that have been made to the water kingdom against your children, I apply the blood of Jesus Christ in their village stream, in their village river, in their village lakes, in the shrine, in their offices, wheresoever they are doing their business, and let the power of those spirit husband, spirit wife, Oh God, let their powers be shattered in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, all the spirit wives attached to their lives. Spirit wives attached to their lives. Causing trouble in their marriage. I cut off your head. You glamour girl from the water. Die! 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 You handsome man from the water. Suitors will come. You will go and warn them. If I see you near my wife, I will cut off your head. And the man will just come. My dear, you are married. I've not married. Your husband came last night and warned me. You personality, anywhere you are, die! I said die! I said die! In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I am loosening your children from the bondage of the marine kingdom. I'm loosening your children from the bondage of the marine altars. I'm loosening your children from the shrines and kingdoms where their names have been taken to. Lord, I am asking, whatsoever they lost in life, as a result of these sacrifices in these altars. May they recover all in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight, Lord, as they go, go with them. Lord, I am asking your power that the in the realm of the spirit, show them what has happened. Amen. By tomorrow, favor, Amen. favor, Amen. open doors, Amen. breakthrough, Amen. good health, Amen. long life. Amen. Follow after them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. You may be seated.